Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Vintage, vintage, I'll get it right of it. Vintage Story. We're doing Vintage Story. So, I mean, we're wasting zero time whatsoever here. We're going to be making some bronze. And the way we're doing this is we're smelting down some copper and tin together. It's 10% tin to 90% copper. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, but on the whole, you should use uh, as less uh, tin as you can possibly do. Uh, that's that, that works, right? You use the least amount of tin that you can get away with. Because, I mean, tin is, at least in my case, much harder to come by than copper. Copper seems to be everywhere. I have about 50 copper veins marked on my map and I have about no tin veins on my map so you know we're, we're gonna be uh very much salvaging the the tin as much as possible we're going to be um dribbling it out here and there but in the meantime hey look our compost is finally ready and this was a hefty amount of disappointment for me um I really thought that I was going to be able to make more high fertility soil than two blocks two blocks for literally a month's amount of effort making the rot and then waiting on the rot to turn into compost it took about a month and a lot of berries and compost and dang just dang like holy dang that was a lot of work to get two blocks of high fertility soil so that's a bummer and hey we're moving on uh from our scraped leather we we made scraped leather and then it got, we, we've now turned it into processed leather and now i'm turning it into leather scraps so that should be good we're we're on the final stage of that it's only going to be three leather scraps so it's nothing to write home about and we're just going to wait on that bronze uh ingots I, like i said in the last episode i have converted pretty much all of our copper into bronze ingots and i don't know if there's a downside to that i think bronze is just a straight up upgrade so um, I've given up on high fertility soil and instead I'm going to settle for medium fertility soil, which I think is good enough. And the high fertility soil will have to be a work in process. As you can, you know, speaking of process, this, this was one of those as well. I, I wasn't quite sure. Uh, I wanted to leave gaps for water and fill those in and just kind of get things ready. And this was really well done, excellently done past me. That was fantastic, 10 out of 10. So there's our bronze ingots. There's a, this is a bit shuffled because I was distracted between three different uh, uh, chores. But um, after a bit of research uh, that my friend was doing, we, uh, we figured out that you only need one block of water. So I basically don't have enough medium soil to cover two seven by seven plots. So I've done as much as I can. I have one plot ready and that'll be uh, something I work on and maybe we'll have one uh, one, uh, what would you call it? Greenhouse plot, uh, ready by springtime. Um, I might also give it a bit of, not limestone, but, uh, saltpeter and bone meal to, uh, you know, uh, increase the fertility of the medium fertility, but it's a pretty expensive affair, so I don't know. Um, so our first tool made with the bronze was a hammer, because my hammer was just about cooked, and I really didn't want to have to um, smelt anything down to make another one. Then our second tool was a pickaxe, of course, because that's what we're going to need. And I know, like, I'm going to be very unoptimal, and this may bother people, um, which I don't really blame you. I'm going to be using this bronze pickaxe to be basically doing construction, which is maybe the most wasteful thing you can do with it. But I'm not too worried about it because we have tons of bronze now. And if I need another bronze pickaxe in order to get something like iron, which is very much in the future, then I will be able to make one. It's not a big deal. Um, I have five more ingots here that I had to smelt of the uh, the bronze material. And I, at this point, had pretty much used up all of our materials, except for we have tons of tin. The, the, the bottleneck, the major bottleneck now is copper. So not not a not a big deal. Also, I, um, this, I wanted to you know, basically use up the hammer that was uh, our copper hammer. And so I smashed up our malachite that we had gotten from that weird dungeon. Um, and I wasn't sure what the malachite was for. I would as I was assuming that it was going to be used for jewelry making, but I, I guess that isn't really implemented into the game yet, if there if it is such a thing. I don't know. 
there's like tons of jewels and stuff so i'm really not sure uh how if if at all that's a thing but in, in any case you apparently smelt down the malachite to get copper which i think is just very odd um i'm sure that's a thing in real life but i don't know there's it's, it just feels wrong to be smelting malachite for copper um malachite is not really a common resource as far as i've seen so i don't know i I just feel that just feels very disjointed to me, but uh, I may I may end up doing that anyway. In fact, I think I've already set up a uh, another alloy to do so. Here's our I I, uh, I basically um, turned one of our pelts or one sorry one of our um, hides into a pelt in order to make some fur gloves. That's going to increase our temperature a little bit more, and maybe we won't freeze. Um, Spoiler, I, I, I'm still freezing, so I still need some more warm clothing, but, uh, you know, that's another process. Here I decided to finally, you know, get off my duff and, and do a bit of decorating, because the, the, the place has been very blocky, I don't know, just like very stale and, and not very creative, so I wanted to, to actually make something look pretty, so I tried to... Uh, turn our front door into something a bit more, a bit nicer to look at. I don't know if I succeeded. I think it's okay. Uh, I'd like to do something better in the future. Maybe, maybe convert it, but for now it, it is what it is. Um, but I want, you know, I wanted to use different uh, colored blocks to kind of get a contrast, um, like pattern. It's all right. I don't know. I, I could, t I could take it or leave it. But any case, this, uh, this episode, I didn't really say, it's not just about alloys, it's mostly about um, upgrading the, the cottage. We're, we're finally, like I, I really wanted to have a whole episode dedicated to um, kind of planning out what the warehouse is going, or warehouse, the, <laughs> the cottage is going to turn into, like what its ultimate shape will be. Its ultimate shape will uh, include a windmill as well as a floor dedicated to various contraptions that will make use of the windmill power, as well as probably an actual bedroom. Um, I've basically just been throwing the bed down uh, wherever I please, and that's where I've been sleeping. But I would like to have a dedicated bedroom just, just to make the place feel like it's an actual home and not just like a big box that I live in. So um, this episode is pretty much solidly dedicated to making uh, the the cottage actually, you know, like basically planning out my, my very ambitious um, ideas for incorporating a windmill and also a roof. Like I've been um, working pretty solidly at, uh, you know, making those shingles. And uh, this is, this is the time we're actually going to start turning them into roof pieces. I really wanted to, to give the cottage like a full roof and I have a pretty ambitious roof in mind. I didn't want to have uh, like a boring roof if that's if that makes sense. I wanted to have verticality built in as well as other ideas. Here's me dying to a wolf as almost par for the course. I may stop including that footage because you've seen it a bazillion times. But uh, as well as working on our cottage, we're also going to be working on the greenhouse and there I've slapped down the two high fertility blocks who knows what uh, what I'll make use of for those blocks I don't know maybe flax I think if there's one crop that I'm gonna want a lot of it's going to be flax because I'm I don't just want a windmill I want a big windmill and when you make the sails you only get four sails and you can add more, like basically you can extend the sails farther for more power um, so that is something I am going to want to do, but uh, it, that's very, very far down the line. For now, I'm honestly just content to have a functioning greenhouse, which we don't yet have, or I don't know, just a normal windmill. Like that would that would do me. Um, it's it's going to be very expensive, and I'm probably going to need uh, to get into hu animal husbandry before I do that because I'm going to need a reliable um, source of fat. Uh, a lot of fat is needed to make the various mechanical parts of the windmill um, for the sake of basically greasing the cogs, I think. Um, that makes sense. 
So here I've wanted to do this for a while, but I wanted to have um, basically an outside staircase. And I'm still playing with the idea of removing the inside staircase in favor of the outside staircase because uh, I just kind of like it more. It doesn't take up any interior rooms, so therefore organizing the interior is a little bit easier and a little bit nicer to look at. And I also just think it does a bit more to, uh, I don't know, if you're if you aware are aware of the word greebling, it kind of adds a bit of greebling to the outside of our cottage. Um, it makes it a bit more interesting to look at and not just like a big old square. So I do want basically on all of the outside facing walls to do something with the cottage that is both functional and aesthetic. And uh, on this upstairs um, second floor landing, I wanted to have uh, kind of like a guardrail that I thought looked pretty good and I started building the wall up. So the second floor is now um, finally a work in process. The second floor is going to be mostly dedicated to the contraptions that I will make use of the windmill power for, um, but that's that's very much a future thing. Um, and I, f I realized since I already had a staircase that moved from the ground floor up to the second floor, I may as well also put a landing in here to uh, so that I have another uh, like exit and access point to the uh, warehouse. And since there is a slight incline around the warehouse, um, I guess it is just a warehouse now. I'm just calling it that. Um, I had to, I, t I did have to have staircase moving up to it and not just like, it wasn't at ground floor. It was slightly below ground floor. Um, I, I kind of like it. I've already gotten it, like very much gotten used to it being there. So, um, whether or not I get rid of the inside staircase, I will not be getting rid of the outside staircase because it is pretty functional already. So um, I do want to have a pretty high ceiling for the second floor. I like a high ceiling. I like it. I think four blocks high is pretty comfortable. Three is the minimum as far as I'm concerned. If you have a two, two block high ceiling, like basically the... Um, minimum space you can actually move around in. I think that is like a borderline barbaric. I, I can't imagine like working in a two two block high uh, environment that just feels so cramped. Um, only from like exclusively to mine shafts. I, I, I would be willing to, you know, I can live with that in mine shafts because it's making the most of your resources, but not, not in a living environment. That's just insane. So, Oh yeah, I included this me accidentally flinging myself off of our high point. So that high point tower there is um, basically where the windmill blades are going to go on the out for, outward facing a wall. Um, and then I'm planning to kind of like have the windmill sort of cascading down into a split um, roof, like a uh, like a triangle roof. If you if you like, I don't know how to explain it, but basically it's. It's like a, a sloped triangle roof, and then uh, half of the cottage is going to be a sloped roof that kind of um, ascends towards the triangle roof. Very difficult to explain, but just trust me, I have a plan, and I think it'll work. And I think by the end of this episode, you'll have a rough idea of what I mean. So this is basically the ascending roof, and that will make up a good portion of the roof, and then I will have um, kind of two two ascending roofs that come to a point. I guess a pointed roof is what I mean. But anyway, here's here's me just kind of working it out and planning, um, planning like how, how tall is this structure going to be? Like I did want it to be tall. I want our windmill to be tall so that we get the most, um, you know, out of our blades. Like the higher I put them, the more wind we get and the more power we get. Um, but also the higher I put it basically forces us to have more floors and therefore more space, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does make this whole structure a lot more ambitious. But anyway, um, you can you can see sort of what my plan is maybe here a little bit and uh, how ambitious this whole thing is going to be. I'm going to need a lot of shingles. I thought I made enough, but uh, really I hadn't even gotten started. So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're going to see a lot of shingle making in the next few episodes, for sure, uh, as well as pr 
probably I will start to get working on animal husbandry as well as finish the greenhouse. Well, uh, finish the first part of the greenhouse, that is. But in any case, that's just about going to do it for this episode. Um, you can see me struggling around trying to, trying to plan this roof. It feels super dangerous to me. If you liked this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.